the computer embedded inside an embedded system is usually a microcontroller. And then microcontrollers will be the focus of part two of this course. And a microcontroller can be thought of as a computer system in a single chip. So we often see them called microcontroller units or MCU. Now a microcontroller contains a microprocessor, contains memory and a range of peripherals which we use to interface with sensors and actuators, you know, and then we can interact with the environment then through these sensors and actuators. So the microcontroller is programmed with a series of instructions or software that instructs it on how to interact with the hardware it's connected to. So this shows a block diagram of a typical microcontroller. So inside of there, we've got a CPU, we've got some flash memory, some RAM, and then various peripherals. So the peripherals are what we use to interface with the outside world. So these have got the external uh, connections. So you can see these come outside of the device. So these external connections are actually what these pins here. So you can see on this typical package, what's used in a microcontroller, we've got lots of pins. So you can connect up LEDs, buttons, other sensors, and so on to these pins. So that gives the CPU access to those external devices. Now when we write software, that software is then compiled, compiled into the ones and zeros which are stored in the flash memory. So the uh, microcontroller we're going to be using later in the course is a LPC1768 from NXP. So this is a 32-bit microcontroller. So note it's not the 64-bit which you often get now with uh, desktop PCs and um, laptops and or smartphones even. So it's a very low power device and it contains an ARM Cortex M3 core. So the actual CPU inside of it is an ARM Cortex M3. So the clock speed is only about 100 megahertz. You can see that's nowhere near as quickly, as quick, sorry, as um, a desktop PC or laptop. But we don't typically need those kind of clock speeds with the kind of applications that embedded systems are used for. So it's got about half a megabyte of flash memory. And again, this is nowhere near the amount that you find in a, say, a PC or a laptop. And only 64 kilobytes of RAM. So a much smaller scale, much lower clock speed, much less memory. So you can see also the price is much cheaper. So it's less than four pounds typically for this microcontroller. You know, so the, you know, the, these, even though these clock speeds and the memory amounts seem quite small, they're actually they've increased a lot over the last few years. You know, so that's allowed these devices to get uh, more powerful. And at the same time, the price has also dropped as well. So you know, that's why we now find these devices much more powerful and better systems on the market. They're more powerful because the actual market controls have got more powerful. The price has also come down as well. So it makes them cheaper to produce, much more affordable. So the actual market controller is often in a small package that's not easy to work with. And so we typically use what are called evaluation boards, particularly in an educational setting. So it makes it much easier to work with a microcontroller. You know, it might be called rapid prototyping with microcontroller units. So on this, in this um, development board, what we're using the second part of the course. This is the actual microcontroller. So it's on a, it's on this um, evaluation board. So there's various things for power, USB connection, so we can connect to a PC, and then you know the pins are broken out into this much more convenient form factor. So connect can connect up various um, sensors and actuators and so on. So when we're using microcontrollers, we often use them through these evaluation boards.